So we have been talking about enlargement, and there are several things that we have covered. Number one, mindset, the change of mindset. That was our first uh, thing that we talked about. Number two, we talked about building inner capacity. That means that we must develop ourselves so that we can be able to handle and receive what God has for us. Number three, we talked about faithfulness. And in faithfulness, we developed three principles. Faithful with the least or little. Faithful with what uh, belongs to another. And faithful with the money. And we said that our level of faithfulness determines how God will uplift us. How God will entrust us with more. And how far we can go. We talked about we have uh, the fear or the sphere of influence that God has given each one of us. And we talked about the measure of grace which can be increased. We also talked about the measure of faith which will continue to grow as we hear the word of God. And out of that, we developed something else which we said is uh, uh, enlargement uh, through management and administration. And we said that everything that God gives to you, you must be able to account to. You must bring order, you must bring administration uh, so that you can continue even to expand. God will never give you anything uh, that you cannot be able to handle. And how do we demonstrate our, our reveal to God we are able to handle anything? Is when he entrusts us with the little where I said that the little thing that God gives you, you build your capacity in how you develop yourself, how you manage them, and it makes room for, uh, within yourself to receive more from God. And uh, that is very key, the little by little principle that God uses. We say that we all do not begin at the top. The Lord wants us to begin from somewhere. And then as we grow, he entrusts us with the more and more in our lives and we said that we must awaken the leader in us every one of us was born and created to be a leader and we say that leadership is not about followership because when god told man to rule to have dominion and to subdue the earth there was no man there are things that we need to subdue in our lives there are things that we need to manage uh, god was speaking about stewardship he was speaking about management what I have given to you. God created the earth. The Bible says the earth and its fullness belongs to God. Also some says that the earth, the highest heaven belongs to God. But the earth he has given to the son of man. So God has given us a domain to rule. A domain to be in charge. A domain where we need to exert authority. Bring order. And also reveal the glory of God uh, in every domain that we are in. And that's where we talked about management. I say you must uh, awaken the leader in you. Don't wait for people to lead you. You must lead yourself. And we say that leadership is about direction. Leadership points you to where you ought to go, where you ought to be in life. And we need to develop those things in our lives. We have crippled mindset in us where maybe we depend so much upon others. We, we create chaos and confusion so that many other people can come to attend to us. But I said as a leader, you must take personal responsibility over your life, personal responsibility over your health, personal responsibility over your mind, personal responsibility over your resources, personal responsibility over your emotions. Let there be no any uh, disorder in your life. You know, we have different kind of disorders. Let your life not be a life of disorder. And don't blame people for your failure. Take personal responsibility because you are the best leader of your life. You are the best leader of your life. Before someone comes to manage you, it means that you are unable to manage yourself. That's why another man will come to manage you. Anyone who manages himself well does not need management from any other person. And I said that the leadership we have in the land uh, just to give us an environment where we have peace and we, have, uh, we, we, are, we are living in safety. But after that, you manage yourself. You manage your own vineyard. You manage your own place. You manage your own house. You manage your life according to the will of God. 
And I usually say that someone may be responsible for your past and present failures. But you are responsible, staying there, you are responsible for your future. Men may be, they may be where you are is as a result of what people did to you. Is as a result of what has happened to you. But you know, you are responsible staying where the confusion of men brought you. You are responsible, number one, staying where in that confusion, in that state. And also you are responsible for your future. But how are you responsible to your future? The Bible says that uh, in the book of Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19, uh, that if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. So you are responsible and you are the one who create future, your future, the way you should go. Where there is no governance, there is disorder, there are chaos in, in effectiveness and fruitfulness. So we must maximize all kind of disorders in our life. We are in the kingdom of God where there is order. God is a God of order. And the Bible says God is not the author of confusion. God is not the author of disorder. God is not the author, uh, the author of disorder. So if there is any disorder in our life, it means that we are not uh, following the example of our God. We are not following the example of our Father. The Bible says, uh, be imitators ye of God. Follow the example of God. Borrow from him. Let your life be uh, a life that reflects uh, the characters of God, the qualities of God. So where there is no governance, where there is no leadership, there is disorder, there is chaos, there is ineffectiveness, and there is fruitfulness. There will not be fruitfulness in your life. Why? Because of disorder. And what is disorder? It is a state of confusion. You know, God has, is not the author of confusion. If there is confusion in your life, that confusion was not brought by God. And you know, there is a spirit of confusion. There is a spirit of confusion. We are talking about several mentalities that we need to address. And last Friday, we talked about the mentality uh, of the Amorites. And we say the Amorites are the mountain dwellers. They are men of pride. They, we say that they are slayers. They kill by their speech. They are slanderers. Amen? And we say that we must know how to handle this mentality and overcome this mentality. Now, we must understand that God is not the author of confusion. God is not the author of any disorder. And you know, because we are in the kingdom of God and we are sons of God, we should carry the image. We should have the likeness of God in our lives. The most confused people in the earth are the church. Is the church. If you want to find confusion, go to the church. If you want to find disorder, go to the church. But you know, the Bible says we are the light of the world. We are the light of the world. We are the light of the world. We are the salt of, of this earth. God has set us on a hill so that we may reveal and show people the way they should go. Remember the nations are streaming into the mountain of the Lord. You know, the mountain of the Lord is above any other. You know, the Bible says that the mountain of the Lord will be exalted above other hills, above other mountains. And the nations of the earth will flock in to be taught the ways of the Lord. Most of the things that we see in the world, they are principles that should be uh, used by the children of God. But sometimes we are unable to decode. We are unable to know them. Remember the secret of the Lord uh, with those who fear him. So that means because you fear God, God reveals his secret. The keys of the kingdom. Jesus said that the secret of the kingdom of God are given to us. To us is given to know how the kingdom operates. How the kingdom operates. We are in the kingdom and God has not hid anything from us. So we must maximize any disorder, any confusion, the way we run our lives, the way we run our families, the way we run things. We must maximize any kind of disorder. When people come in the church, they should not see chaos. They should not see confusion, but they should see order. 
the way Solomon, who had received the wisdom of God, when King Sheba came to visit her, the Bible says her, and she saw the order, how excellent everything, how was running the way it was supposed to run her. Then the Bible said there was no spirit in her. So she fainted. She was slayed by that anointing of order. And we must maximize any order, uh, disorder in our life. Any state of confusion comes from the devil. Comes from lack of good management in our lives comes from lack of good management in our lives and we have many kind of disorders and you know god will make sure that he has set us in a place where we can bring order in our life we should not uh, allow any state of confusion disorder because disorder disrupts us it, it is a lack of arrangement you lack order a lack of arrangement in your life setting things in the right order in the right manner the way they should be there is a how things should be in your life and when we lack uh, order we we lack good arrangement so we should maximize mental disorder public disorder personality disorders in our lives so that when people come into our life they see these are men who are living uh, in an orderly manner and we know that in creating man, God didn't have a slavery mind. But God had a rulership mind. God never created man to become a slave. But the reason for creation of man was for rulership. God thought about a manager. Because God didn't create man from the, uh, as the first thing. The first thing to be created was the heaven, the sun, all those things. And God finished his creation with the creating man. Why is that? I say that God is so much administrative. He knows what to begin with and what to end with. He never began by creating man. Man was in his thought. But he, he shelved that thought until the appointed time when he knew now when we bring man, he had the resources, he had an environment to manage he has and he ha he must have our likeness he must be created in our image amen and we must give man what we have you know you can't give what you do not have if abraham was to bless the nation he has the blessing so the blessing comes from god and that's what the bible says that blessing of the lord maketh rich and adds no sorrow or toiling in it the blessing comes from god comes from god so God said, let us bless man. So in the initial thoughts of God, God never saw, thought about slavery, but he thought about rulership. When God thinks about you, when God sees you, he sees the potential, the ability to manage, to govern, to rule things into your life. And that's what the Bible says. Uh, he gave man dominion. That is the book of first uh, Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. Uh, let us create man in our own image and in our own likeness and let us give them dominion it is the one who have the likeness and the image of god is that man that man will have dominion and what is dominion dominion means to govern to rule to control to manage and to have authority and to master dominion means uh, you are governing something you are ruling over something you are controlling something you are managing something you have the ability to lead amen you have authority over something and you are mastering something what has god called you to master in life you must understand what has god called you to master because god gave you dominion and we have dominion God has given us dominion. Moses tells us in Genesis, and David repeats again in the book of Psalms chapter 8, that what is man that you are so mindful of him? And you have made him ruler, master, over all what you have created. You have put the fish, the bird of the air, amen, everything under the feet of man, so that he may bring order. And when God created man, the Bible says he blessed him and said, be fruitful, 
multiply, subdue, and have dominion. The blessing of the Lord manifested in this four way. The blessing in you. And I said God had never withdrew those words even from us. God has never withdrew the word, be fruitful, multiply, subdue the earth, and have dominion. That was the mandate God gave to man. That is the mandate given to us. That is what God brings about our life. And that means we must bring order in our lives, in everything that we are doing. You know, in life, we should be driven by passion. Life without passion, you cannot achieve a lot. And I say there are most of us who work, but they are not driven by the passion. There are those who are driven by hunger, but not passion. Why do you work? Why do you go to work? Why do you report every day, every Monday, from Monday to Friday to your working place? Is it because of hunger or is it because of passion? We have two categories of people. Those who are driven by hunger and those who are driven by passion. If you are out of place, you will be driven by hunger. But you are, if you are in the right place, you will be driven by passion. We see this in the book of Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 26. The Bible says, uh, The person who labors, labors for himself. For his hungry mouth drive him on. Now, if you are driven by hunger to work, then you are not in the right place. Some of us who are in the wrong place, God never created your body to be carrying stress. We, you know we are stressed all over. Paul says we are hard, we are pushed, we are, but we are not broken. We are, we are, we are crushed. Amen? He, he says that about his ministry. You know, most of us, we are driven by hunger to work, but not by passion. And that reveals that what you are doing uh, was not the initial thing that God wanted you to do in life. Work is a blessing because the Bible said God will bless the work of your hand. So that means there is enjoyment when you do what you love. When you do what is in you, there is enjoyment. But if you do something without enjoyment, if you are in a family and you do not enjoy that family, if you are in a business and you do not enjoy the business, if you are employed and you do not enjoy that employment, what you do, then the reason why you are there is because your fear is starvation. But you are not thinking about administration and impacting the community and the business you are doing now with the image, bringing the order of God in what you do. Many versions will say that it is the hunger of a passion, of person that drives them to work. I know we have created a lifestyle of uh, stress all over. Your body was not created for stress. Stress at your working place, stress in your family, stress wherever you go, you are stressed up. And that brings disorder in our life. It causes us to do what we are doing without a joy, without a happiness. Why? Because we are in a wrong place. We are in a wrong place. And we cannot bring the right order of God, the nature of God, the image of God in what we do. The Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 2, verse 5 and 7, and then we are going to read verse 15. Before any plant of the field was in the earth, and before any herb of the field had grown for the Lord had not caused it to rain on the earth and there was no man to till the ground and now you see God does not want to waste anything before the Bible says any plant of the field was in the earth and before the herb of the field had grown the Lord had not caused it to rain 
on the earth. Why? There was no man to till the ground. There was no one to manage the ground. There was no one to work on the ground. So the Lord with the head of the rain, because there was no man to till the ground. So he had to create man and then send rain. You know, the earth was not meant uh, to be uh, refreshed by the dew. The Bible said there was only a mist in the earth. The earth was supposed to be watered by the rains, but not the dew. So there was no man. The absence of man will lead to the absence of rain. And that brings starvation. That brings famine. The absence of a manager leads to the absence of the blessings of God. Because rain is a symbol of the blessings of God. Satan cannot bring rain. Rain comes with a purpose. To water the earth and what we have sown in the earth will grow and will have plenty. So the Lord could not allow the earth to produce, to be fruitful, until there was man in place. When you are out of place, there are things that you miss in life. When we are out of place. I say sometimes we pray a lot. It is good to pray. But you know, most of our prayers comes as a result of the chaotic life, of the disorder in our life. We want God to attend to our crisis. You know, you can create a crisis in your life. Where every time you pray is about the crisis in your family. The crisis in your working place. The crisis in your health. The crisis. So there is no relationship and communion with God. Because if you come to me only in the time of crisis, then there will be no communion. I'll be just there managing your crisis. God is not there to manage our crisis. Some of the crises, we produce them by our own. By lack of order. By lack of good management. God does not want you to live a life of chaos and crisis. But he wants you to maximize everything he has given you. So there was no rain in the earth. The earth was supposed to give forth, to produce forth. But because there was no man, there was no rain. And verse 6, the Bible says, But a mist went up from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man. Amen. Formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed on his nostril the breath of life. And he became a living being. The Bible says, verse, after God doing that, verse 15, Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to do what? To tend and to keep it. To tend and to keep it. God never sent the rain on the earth until the man was rightly positioned. And there will be no rain in the land until... There is a man to manage what God is about to pour in the earth. The rain is waiting for a man. Your blessings are waiting for you. Rain is a symbol of the blessing. The rain is waiting for man. When man is in the right place, God will release something. You know, we don't pray for promotion. When you're in the right place, promotion finds you there. So there must be formation because God formed the man. God must form you. You must have the image of God. God planted the garden. It is a garden God planted. Amen. And the man that formed by God that we are given dominion. God formed the, garden, the man. God planted the garden. And after planting the garden, he placed man in the garden until formation takes place in us there will be no divine placement god want to divide to place us in a divine place in a divine way formation proceeds a placement there is a place that god has for you 
But God must form you. God must create his image in you. God must do something in you so that you may match what God wants to give you, what God has in mind for you. And that means in that text of Genesis, God will never give you what you pray for, but what you can manage. The problem was not God. The problem was not the rain. The problem was the absence of man. The absence of a manager leads to the absence of the blessings of God. If you are not a good manager, the Lord will not send the rain in your business. The Lord will not send the rain in your life. The Lord will not send the rain, the rain of the blessing. And that means that we are all responsible to manage what God has given us. When you mismanage what God has given you, you lose it. The way to lose anything is through lack of good management. When you don't manage something the way it ought to be managed, you lose it. And the plan and the will of the devil is for us to be ignorant of the blessings that God has given us. Of the little that God has given us. Of what God has already put in our hand. We despise it. And once we despise it, what happens? We don't see the value of it. And we lack to manage it the way it's supposed to be managed. And we lose it. We say that through the foolishness of a man, a man's foolishness causes him to twist his own ways. And then he gets angry with God. So we lack that ability or that sensitivity or that conviction within us that this thing was given to me by God. When we lack, when, whenever you mismanage anything, you will lose it. And bad management produces poverty, lack, and frustration in our lives. When we lack to manage what God has given us, bad management produces poverty. Poverty is as a result of lack of good management. You know, they say the poorest nation, country in the earth, statistics will say that is Afghanistan. But you see, there are resources in every nation. But what we do with the resources is determined. No one is born poor. No nation, no country is poor. It is a lack of management. It is a lack of utilizing the, the resources that God has put in the land. Everywhere, God has put resources in every place. You know, we thought that when you're in Trukana, that can be the poorest, uh, uh, the poorest uh, uh, county. But what they discovered last time is, there is oil there. We thought that we need to be in, in, in central or lift valley because there is rain there and whatever. But you know, God has put wealth where you are. Wealth is where you are. You don't need to go to America to be wealthy. No. You just know how to manage what God has given you. Lack of good management leads to poverty. Leads to poverty. Leads to frustration. Leads to lack. It leads to lack. Luke chapter 15, verse 13 to 14. We see, then he said, a certain man had two, from verse 11, had two sons, and the younger one of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood, and not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country and there wasted his possession with the prodigal living but when he had spent all there arose a, a severe famine in that land and he began to be in want then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into the field to feed swines and he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swines ate. And no one gave him anything. 
Now that is lack of good management. We say that this young man never developed in a capacity to handle what he had. He wasted all his money in parties and prostitution. The Bible say a prodigal living. Living in a way, in an extravagant way. Misusing the resources. Using the money in a wrong way. The money was not assigned to do that. But the man, when the, the young man received the money, he never thought of managing the money and growing the money. So lack of good management leads to poverty, lack, and frustration. This young man was frustrated not because he was poor, but the man lacked good management. And what did he do? The Bible says uh, that he lived a life of party and prostitution. And he did not build meaningful relationship. When you hear parties and uh, prostitution, it means uh, the man never said his priority right. He was out of order. There was chaos, disorder, crisis in his mind, in his heart. And after receiving so much, the Bible says, there was a severe famine in the land. You should know in the season of plenty, how you manage and how you use what you have in the season of plenty. There is another season. Days are not the same. Years are not the same. It is only those who manage who will survive in the time of global crisis. When there is crisis in the land, you won't tell God, you know, there are those who live uh, as if there is no future. They live as if, and we see this young man uh, live as if there is no future. This young man thought he had much to spend in parties. He loved that kind of lifestyle. But he never knew there is a severe famine coming in his way. He wasted his possession through bad management, which led him to be in want to be poor. You know, some of the time that's what happened. And we think is an attack from the devil. We think is the devil who has stolen our money. No, it's not the devil. In the season of plenty, where there is consistent, where money is flowing in our lives, we need to be so accurate. We need to be so wise. And know that the season of plenty will not always be there. Unless I build a good structure in my life of management. And that means some people are living a life of parties. They want to celebrate. They are in a celebration mood from January. God say the joy of the Lord is your strength. God wants you to be joy, to have joy every day. But joy does not mean parties every day. A life of parties will lead you into poverty. Because that is utilizing the money in a wrong way. It is a hevite spirit. When you have money, you fail to use that money according to the way it's supposed to be used. You mismanage it. But when poverty and famine come, you start to cry all over. Oh God, help me. I've said God does not want always to respond to your crisis. He does not want to respond to your crisis all the time. So the famine came and he had spent all he had. Lack of good management we see there. Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 17. Wine and luxury are not the way to riches. The wise saves for the future, but the foolish man, that is verse 20, spent what he get. Let us read in, a, in a, another version. He who loves pleasure, luxury, that is luxury, will be a poor man. Will be a poor man. So this man loved the pleasure. And that led him to poverty, to be in want. 
He who loves pleasure will be a poor man. He who loves wine and oil will not be rich. Verse 20 it says, There is desirable treasure and oil in the dwelling of the wise, but the foolish man squanders it. You see, in the house, in the dwelling of the wise, there is treasure and there is oil. But in the house of the foolish man, he squanders all of it. He squanders all of it. Why? Through a prodigal living. Through a prodigal living. So lack of good management, we see there, you can't have confidence to face your famine in your, if you mismanage what you have. Lack of good management leads to crisis. You must know how to manage your life. Let your life, uh, even in life, your management. Now, good management produces more and you will have prosperity and you will have more in your life. We see this in the book of Proverbs, chapter 21 and verse 20. The Bible says that uh, precious treasures and oil are in the house of the upright or the wise. There is desirable treasure and oil in the dwelling of the wise. There is desirable treasure and oil in the house or dwelling of the wise. Who is the wise? Wisdom is application of knowledge. When you apply the word, what God has been saying, you safeguard yourself for many other things uh, that comes to destroy many people. So good management produces more and you will have uh, prosperity. Matthew 24, 45. The Bible says, A faithful, a sensible servant is one who, to whom the master can give the responsibility of managing his other household servant and feeding them at the proper time. I'm reading from the NLT. So there's management. A faithful, sensible servant is one to whom the master can give responsibility of managing his other household servants. Now, are you among the one who are being managed or are you managing? We have group of group, two group of people here. The one who are being managed and the one who is managing. And this is a faithful, a sensible servant. Is the one to whom the master can give the responsibility of managing his other household servant and feeding them. Continue. If the master returns and finds that the servant has done a good job, there will be a reward. The way to promotion, the way to productivity, the way to enlargement, the way to rulership is through good management. You see, there are rewards for good managers. Because God is not wasteful. Let us go until 251. Uh -huh. I tell you the truth. The master will put the servant in charge of all his own. You see, it's through management, good management and faithfulness, we live a life of dominion. Because of the management, the Bible says he will be put in charge of all his owns, he owns. But what if the servant is evil and think my master won't be back for a while? And he begins beating the other servants, partying and getting drunk. The master will return and, uh, and announce an unexpected. And he will cut the servant to pieces and assign him a place with the hypocrite. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That is regret. There will be demotion. So God wants us to know that. God will never allow growth where there is no good management. Growth comes as a result of good management in our life. And we see the right there. That because of good management, there was growth. Because of bad management, the man was removed from the place of influenza 
and put her in a place where there was regret. There should be a radical change in our lives. And this is a, a mentality change. There are certain mentalities when we have them. We cannot be enlarged. Because we are not thinking in the right way. We are not doing what God wants us to do in the right way. So there's, there are many things that need to be addressed. Need to be confronted in our lives. So that we can experience enlargement personally. And the issue here is management. So that you can experience enlargement personally. Unless we bring leadership over our lives, there can be no great changes in our lives. And you know, change is divine. So you must be deliberate that there are some things from now on what you will change in your life. The way you do things, you change. The way you live, the way you behave, you change. Because it's a change of mentality that determines uh, the change of your actions. The change of your behavior. Yes, you can dream big. But your dream is determined by the mentality and the changes you want to make in your life. Now, there are several things about changes. If you want to make change, number one, change is possible. You, it is possible to change in your life. But also change is costly. You must know what it will cost you to change. Change is a process. You don't just change in one day. It's a process you engage in. Change also is difficult because of the cost. It will misconvenience you. Change requires a radical mindset. It requires we become deliberate. It requires determination. It is possible for you to change. But also change is a process. It is costly. It is difficult. It is difficult. It is a radical. It should be deliberate. It requires determination. Nothing will change until you change. And when we change in our mentality, something will happen in us. Number one, when there is change in our lives, something happens. There will be growth. Growth is a manifestation of the inward change. There will be fulfillment, no frustration in your life. It's a result of the change that has happened. There will be riches. When you change, you attract riches. You attract promotion in your life. There will be productivity. You start to produce more. You start to multiply. There will be reduced losses in your life. You reduce losses in everything that you do. There will be progress because you are changing. And there will be glory and blessing in your life. When we change growth, fulfillment, riches, productivity, reduce losses, progress, glory, and the blessing of God will continue to rest in our life. God does not want us to live as people who are waiting for miracle every time and every day. You know, there are people who live that life because of lack of good management they always wait for miracles. What is a miracle? A miracle is a divine intervention of God that cannot be done by any man. It is God coming on the scene to help a man. Most of our prayers, I say that, they are come as a result of the crisis we have created. So we want to live. Alive of God, just attending us, just attending us. God does not want you to live that life. That unless God does a miracle, you are stuck forever. 
that unless God does a miracle, you will die. That unless God does a miracle, <laughs> yes, we have a place for miracle. But there are many people who mismanage what they have been given by God and they are asking for miracles. They are waiting for miracles. The miracle is the beginning point. Huh? God giving you the seed huh? so that you will not live a desperate life huh? waiting for miracles every time. You are obedient determines huh? how God can produce and supply to you. The woman was about to die. Just her obedient enabled God to open the supply that was for her. Obedient. And they lived in miracles. A miracle for three years. But after that there was, the Lord sent, uh, send what? The rains. After sending the rain, uh, the woman never went to the jar and to the flour. Because there was rain. So she knew now is a, is a transition, a shift of a season where I was depending on God to supply like Elijah, waiting for the raven to bring her, but also God taking the Elijah to a woman's, a widow's house. Now we must change that mindset. Lack of good management causes people always to wait for miracles financial miracles because you are in crisis you are in crisis my ritual crisis you want a miracle for your husband to talk to you miracle <laughs> miracle now let me give you a verse you learn from this verse today i saw this and i was amazed exodus 16 and verse 4 there should be a mindset change or shift from wanting more manna from heaven every day to where God is taking us is a place where we need to do something with the ground. The Bible said, Then the Lord has said to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain quote every day, that I may test them whether they will walk in my way or not. And it shall be, the Bible says, on the sixth day that they shall prepare what they bring in and it shall be twice as much as they, they gathered daily. So they were living a life of miracles. Every day, una toka inje, una enda tuna kikapu, una weka chakula, una rudi una kula, una enda una kula. Every day, every day, siku ya sita, unaenda na kikapu kubwa, unachukua siku mbili. Now, Joshua chapter 5 and verse 12. Some of us, we are in that season where manna is going to cease. Where manna is going to cease. God is bringing you to a life of management. Bringing you to Canaan. Where you must sow. Where you must wait for the season. Where you must manage what you have harvested. Until the next season in life. A change of, uh, of seasons in your life. There is a season of miracles. Every day receiving miracles. You need to manage what God has given you. Listen what the Bible says. Then the manna did what? Then the manna. And be a jiraniako, then the manna will cease. <laughs> it will be so ridiculous after manna season, unayanda na kikap. Manna is about to cease. Manna is about to cease. When they did what? The Bible says, manna ceased when on the day after they had eaten the produce. Of the land, God waited back our pande. God waited back akuna na harvest, and the children of Israel no longer had what manna, but they ate the food of the land of Canaan that year. A season is coming where your manna will cease. 
The prodigal son wasted the resources and the manna ceased. Do you want God to respond to your crisis? Or do you want God to add more to what you have? There are different seasons in our lives. Management removes you from a place of desperation and being in crisis all the time to the plenty that God has. And that's why we are talking about enlargement. Unless you sit, you can't walk into it. Unless you sit, that's what I'm saying. Good miracles are good. And God will bless us. There are going to be miracles in our life. But let me tell you, what is a miracle? What is a miracle? You must define what is a miracle. A miracle is something supernatural that exceeds the natural. That exceeds the natural. That means it is, a, it is the beginning point when God wants to do something. He begins with a miracle. But if you are out of place, you are not managing. Every time you will be, oh God, I'm in a crisis. Oh God, I need a miracle. Oh God, I need a miracle. But God will ask you, what did I give you? You know, always God will ask us, what do we have? The Shunammite woman was asked by Elijah. Yes, your husband feared God. Yes, your debtors are coming to take your sons. But what do you have? I want to begin with you where you have. I want uh, to create a miracle for you. I have only a little oil in my house. Elijah said, go take the oil and go and borrow empty vessels and lock yourself in the house with your sons. Now, when we study that, I don't want to go there, but the way the woman saw the children, his boys, his sons, if you study well, you see, he saw them as immature, irresponsible children. But Elijah saw them as her sons. My lad, that's what the Bible says, Second Kings chapter 4. That my, me, my lads, who are the lads? These are literal people who have not developed and built capacity. They cannot build at the house of the father. Because a son is a builder of the house of the father. Is one who builds the name of a father. Is one who manages on behalf of the father. The woman saw that they were lads. They were, is, is, uh, it is uh, verse 1 to 7. Verse 1 to 7. Verse 1 to 7. You want to, you see there? The, the wife of a man from the company of the prophet cried out to Elisha. Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that he revered the Lord. But, but now, his creditors is coming to take my two boys. Boys. But you know, Elisha said, take your two sons. A mentality shift. Don't see them as boys. See them as mature. As those who can build the house of their father. Those who are responsible in building the house of their father. So we must bring management in everything that we do. Wacha tu wacha kuongojea mana. Wakatu wa mana unenda kuisha. Kuna watu hapa wakatu wa mana yao inenda kuisha. I'm not, I'm not a prophet of doom. But I'm saying, if you don't manage wakatu wa mana unenda kuisha. So we utatoka na mana yako. Utatoka na mana yako. Na kikapi yako. Uwane watu waki waki kushekerea alafu urudi nyuma alafu uanze kurani mungu and one way to start managing yourself start with the small things start with the small things start with the small thing do you know tithe tithe is God management training program for our lives Is God management 
training program in our lives. Because the tenth belong to him. So you can't spend the tenth that belongs to him. And if you want to know how to manage it, let me give you five things. There must be accountability. Any management has to do with accountability. There must be discipline. You must discipline yourself. There must be honesty. Because if God is going to open the floodgate of heavens, that you may have much, you hear? That you may have much that you not have room for is de determined by your accountability, your discipline, your honesty. It requires discipline, diligence. It requires faithfulness. So as you, as you do what you are doing, remember you are the one who can limit your progress. You are the one who can limit what God wants to do with your life. So we'll continue from there. Good management. We must all have good management. And we must know the seasons are changing. Seasons are shifting. God wants to entrust us more. God wants to open door for us. God wants to open doors for us. Gates for us. Amen. God wants to open me. God wants to promote us. God wants to open great doors for our lives. But you know, in every season and go, that God brings into a man, you see that in Daniel. Anything that you lack management of will stress you, will disappoint you. It will bring frustration to you. That's how Moses was. Until Jethro came and told him, you need management. Exodus 18, you need management. You need to have men who will lead people. Who will lead a thousand. Who will lead fifties. Who will lead a hundred. Who will lead tens. Who will lead five people. And let them bring their crisis and all their things they want, their complaint to those people. But their hard ones deal with them. Moses was so frustrated with the life. And that's why he told God, if this is the way you are going to deal with me, kill me. Frustration. When there is no good management, you desire death. Because there is no joy. Jethro brought the wisdom. You need to put people in a place of, of management, to manage the people. Yes, they are delivered, but they need management. If you attend these people this way, you are going to get worn out, and you will worn out, the people will get worn out. All of you will be destroyed because of management. So what does God want? Whether you have much or least, bring good management into your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So may the Lord bless you so much. And I pray that the Lord, this word will continue uh, to speak to you. To speak to you. Listen day by day. When we post, listen again and again. Listen again and again. You listen thoughtfully. Knowing that God is addressing you in one way or another. God is not addressing anyone. If there is any prodigal living in your life, a life of party, a life of celebration every time. Know that there is a season of famine that is coming. But when the season of famine will come, you will eat the pods. You will be in the, with the swines. Because no one will be willing to give you anything. Because God had given you enough for this. Knowing there is a season of famine in the name of all.